2023. And I just wanted to let you know that I am going to continue reading the Testaments as I started in March because I really do want to find out what happened. And I'm going to be completely honest. Because I wasn't on a strict schedule with the book, I would read the pages, but I wasn't really absorbing what I was reading because I was too nervous. So I reread the chapters and I was thinking, I'm going to start from the beginning, from the very beginning, because I reread the chapters, I completely understand what's going on. I was nervous. I've spent 51 seconds talking about it. So I am going to put down the phone and record the Testaments by Margaret Atwood, who are Handmade Tale fans, because I know that season six is coming up soon because I have primed video. Season six isn't up yet, but I haven't even asked Dr. Google yet. So I have yet to do that. And I really want to talk in an Irish accent when I read this, but I know that I can't because I'm not even good at doing Irish accents. Another woman who reads, she's not, a, she's a, she's a young girl, but she's a woman. She is reading, if you want to read, and it is a, she's amazing. She's an amazing storyteller. She reads the book and does a Cole's notes and intertwines her review with parts of the reading that are interesting. And she is hilarious. She imitated Meghan Markle at a party, and she said, I can imagine Meghan Markle doing this. Um, oh, oh my gosh, look at the recipes you have. Uh -huh. Oh, I wish I would have known that you were doing this because, you know, oh, you definitely got the, um, the uh, doll right because um, nobody will get indigestion. Yeah, yeah, you got that one right. <laughs> She's a panic. Her name is Cherry Denise, C-H-E-E-R-I-E, -E Denise. And she's great. She wakes up every morning at five o'clock before she feeds her children and she reads Spare. And she is so freaking good at it. I Yesterday, I binge watched her. I'm not even kidding. She's one of my favorite um, subscriptions and tea and therapy, of course, and the Royal Network and the Royal Grift and Sean Atwood and Andrew in, um, on the edge. Um, and oh my gosh, I could just go out. Oh, Lady Colin Campbell. At any rate, so I'm reading the Testaments from the very, very beginning because I was watching how Cherry Denise has everything so organized, like each chapter, um, and they're all underneath each other, and it all makes sense. Um, and I thought, you know what, Lasha, you're 52 years old. You can't think of that? What a smart girl. So Cherry Denise, I'm piggybacking off some of your ideas. Thank you so much. And I did start to read, but, um, but then I saw that she was doing it and I thought, oh, okay, same thought process, but she's just really sharp. And so I'm starting with the Testaments from the very, very, very beginning. Like, I mean, the beginning by Margaret Atwood. The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. It starts off with Stature, the Ardua Hall Holograph. So I'm starting from the very beginning. You know what? If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Thank you, Ricky. Uh-oh. Thank you, Ricky. So I'm keeping to my word, I'm keeping to my word, meaning I am doing the testaments on Thursdays, but I am starting this YouTube channel like it's fresh. Just like when I go to the gym, I squeeze. Okay, I have spoken for 5.05, 5 
minutes about nothing. I will ensure that the audience knows. And I am reading The Testaments by Margaret Atwood for Handmaid's Tale fans before season six comes out. Although this book was written in 2019 and the hype was then, I'm reading it now. Okay, I'm gonna put the phone like this so you don't have to stare at me. Or, why don't I put it this way? Wait, what can you look at? There, why don't you look at that? And I'll read. There, that's perfect. This is called The Ardua Hall Holograph, Chapter 1. Only dead people are allowed to have statues, but I have been given one while still alive. Already I am petrified. The statue was a small token of appreciation for many, many con uh, contributions, said the, uh, the citation, which was read out loud by Aunt Vidala. She'd been assigned the task by our superiors and was far from appreciative. I thanked her with as much modesty as I could summon up, then pulled the rope that released the cloth drape shrouding me. It billowed to the ground and there I stood. We don't do cheering here at Ardua Hall, but there was some discreet clapping. I inclined my head in a nod. My statue is larger than life, as, statue, as statues tend to be. Yeah, my, st my, my statue is larger than life, as, stat as statues are meant to be, and shows me as younger, slimmer, and in better shape than I've been for some time. I am standing straight, shoulders back, my lips curved into firm and benevolent smile, but my eyes are fixed on some cosmic point of reference understood to represent my idealism, my unflinching comment to duty, my determination to move forward despite all obstacles, not that anything in the sky would be visible to my statue. Place, sorry, no, I, I am sorry. Uh, let me repeat that. Not that anything in the sky would be visible to my statue placed as it is in a morose cluster of trees and shrubs beside the foot path running in front of our dual hall we ants must not be too presumptuous even in stone clutching my left hand is a girl of seven or eight gazing up at me with trusting eyes my right hand rests on the on the head of a woman crouched at my side, her hair bailed, her eyes unturned in an, I'm turning the page, just a minute, my right hand rests on, on the head of a woman crouched at my side, her hair bailed, her eyes upturned, her eyes upturned in an expression that could be read as either craven or grateful. One of our handmaids and behind me is one of my pearl girls, ready to set out on her missionary work. Hanging from a belt around my waist is my t taser. This what my taser. This weapon reminds me of my failings. Had I been more effective, I would not have needed such implement, such an implement. The, pers the, per oh, the persuasion in my voice would have been enough. 
If you need a taser, this is Lasha talking. If you need a taser to get people to do something, there's a freaking problem. There's a real problem. What I love about Margaret Atwood is she does not write about anything that has not happened in history thus far. And we are not learning everything from history. And just as I'll leave it for the end, sorry. Back to the book. As a group of statu, ooh, as a group of statuary, it's not a great success too crowded. I would have preferred more emphasis on myself, but at least I look sane. As a group of statutary, of, yeah, statutary, yeah, oh my goodness, Lasha. It's okay. Reading out loud, it takes a, a real talent, I have to say. Storytelling. As a group of statutory, it's not a great success too crowded. I would have preferred more emphasis on myself, but at least I look sane. It could well it could well have been otherwise as the elderly sculptress, a true believer since deceased, had a tendency to confer bulging eyes on her subjects. A sign of their pious fever. Fever. Well, I know how to pronounce this and I feel very ignorant. Um, F E R. Fervor. 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 Her bust of Aunt Helena looks rabbit. That of Aunt Videla is hyperthyroid and that of Aunt Elizabeth appears to explode. At the unveiling, the sculptures, the sculptress, sorry, at the unveiling, the sculptress was nervous. Was her rendition of me efficiently flattering? Did I approve of it? Would I be seen to approve I toyed with the idea of frowning at the sheet as it came off. Then I thought of it, I am not without compassion. Very like, very lifelike, I said. That was nine years ago. Since then, my statue has weathered. Pigeons have decorated me Moss has spouted in my damper crevices. Bo uh, borderies have taken to leaving offerings at my feet. Eggs for fertility. Orange to suggest the fullness of pregnancy. Croissants to reference the moon. I ignore the breadstuffs. Usually they have been uh, rained on. But pocket the oranges. Oranges are so refreshing. I write these words in my private sacrum within the library of Ardua Hall. One of the few librarians remaining after the enthusiastic book burnings that have been going on across our land. The corrupt and blood smeared fingerprints of the past must be wiped away to create a clean space for the morally pure generation that is surely about to arrive, such is the theory. But among those bloody fingerprints are those made by ourselves, and these can't be wiped away so easily. Over the years, I've buried a lot of bones. Now I'm inclined to dig them up again if only for you, if only for you. Edification, my unknown reader. If you are reading, this manuscript at least will have survived. Though perhaps I am fantasizing, perhaps I will never have a reader, perhaps I'll only be talking to the wall in more than, more ways than one. But that's enough. 
inscribing for today, my hand hurts, my back aches, and my nightly cup of hot milk awaits me. I'll stash this screed in its hiding place, avoiding the surveillance cameras. I know where they are, having placed them all myself. Despite such persecutions, I'm aware of the risk. I'm, I'm, I'm running. Writing can be dangerous. What betrayals? And then what denunciations might lie in store for me? There are several within Ardua Hall who would love to get their hands on these pages. Wait. I counsel them silently because it will get worse. Precious Flower, Section 2, Transcript of Witness Testimony, 69A, Chapter 2. You have asked me to tell you what it was like for me when I was growing up within Gilead. You say that it will be helpful, and, and I do wish to be helpful. I imagine you expecting nothing but horrors, but the reality is that many children were loved and cherished in Gilead as elsewhere, and, and many adults were kind enough, fallible in Gilead as anywhere else. <clears throat> I hope you will remember too that we all have some nostalgia for whatever kindnesses we were known as children, however bizarre the conditions of that childhood may seem to others. I agree with you that Gilead ought to fade away. There is too much of wrong in it, too much that is false, and too much that is surely contrary to what God ever intended. But you must permit me with some space to mourn the good that will be lost. At our school, pink was for spring and summer, plum was for fall and winter, White was for special days, Sundays, and celebrations. Arms covered, hair covered, skirts down to the knee before you were five, and no more than two inches above the ankle after that, because the urges of men were terrible things. Urges of men were terrible things. Urges of men were terrible things things needed to be curbed. The man eyes that were always roaming here and there like the eyes of tigers, those searchlight eyes needed to be shielded from the alluring and indeed blinding power of us, of our sharply of our sharply or skinny or fat legs, of our graceful or knobby or sausage arms, of our peachy or blotchy skin, of our entwining curls of shiny hair, or our coarse unruly pelts, or our straw-like wispy braids. It did not matter whatever our shapes and features we were, snares and enticements despise ourselves. We were the innocent and blameless causes that though our own very nature could make them drunk with lust so they'd stagger and lurch and topple over the verge. The verge of what, we wondered? What was it, like a cliff? and no plugging down into flames like snowballs made of burning sulfur hurled by the angry hand of God. We were custodians of an invaluable treasure, an invaluable treasure that existed unseen inside us. We were precious flowers that had to be kept safely inside glass houses or else we would be ambushed and our petals would be torn off and our treasure would be stolen. We would be ripped apart and trampled 
by the ravenous men who might lurk around any corner out there in this wide, sharp, edged, sin-ridden world. That's really good. Okay, so that was 20 minutes. All right. I just want you to know what I read. Okay, so I started with statue, okay, and I read right up to here on page, sorry, my glasses, isn't that terrible, 19. So, tomorrow morning, just like Cherry Denise, I'm getting up in the morning and I'm going to start on this page right from here. And I think thus far learning about the ants, the handmaids, the children, what they felt, I think that season six is going to be excellent. And I hope you enjoyed the reading and I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Have a good, I, I was going to do something corny. Have a great night.